Welcome to a special edition of S&P 500 analysis. Today is June 14, 2021. Something happened today that want me to do a special edition to kind of let you in on what to watch for in the coming days. So stay tuned. Let's start off with the daily chart of the S&P 500. As you can see, the S&P 500 put in a new all-time high and close with a new all-time closing high. I tweeted out last night that said the ES, you know, the E mini S&P 500 put it a, uh, you know, put it a Globex all-time high. So it is not surprising for us to see the S&P 500 to go and make another new all-time high. But the unexpected is that it did it today. And also I'm going to show you a chart that actually did it in the last half an hour so let's go and uh, take a look at the other indexes and by the way the uh, s p 500 was up uh, 7.71 point or 0.18 percent so it's not a big deal but it's enough to uh, drive it up to the all-time high and also the other one that is really um, uh, you know making a move is the nasdaq 100 remember nasdaq 100 we said uh, we're expecting the uh, keep an eye on NASDAQ 100 to make a new high uh, this week. So today is up uh, almost 130 points or 0.93 percent. And later on, I'm going to show you the stock that is actually pushing the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 uh, index. Now let's go and take a look at the other indexes, uh, starting with the Dow Jones Transportation. So the Dow Jones Transportation is uh, still showing weakness. It's down. 133 point or 0.87%. And the Dow Jones Industrial also closed down 85 point, almost 86 point or 0.25%. And the Russell 2000 also closed down 9.6 uh, points or 0.41%. And also the other one is the broader market index, the New York Stock Exchange Composite also closed down and almost came up and uh, joined the uh, uh, party with S&P 500. And the uh, Nasdaq 100 coming up on a new high, but it did not make it, and it closed down 32 and a half point or 0.19 percent. So now here are the stock that is actually pushing the Nasdaq and the uh, uh, S&P 500. Facebook closed with a new closing high, and also, uh, well, did not put in a, uh, a new all-time high. The all-time high is here at 338.30. And today's high is only uh, 336.82, but it did close with a new all-time closing high. It closed at 336.77, and the last closing high was uh, 336.58. So it closed above that a uh, couple, you know, what, 20 cents or so, right? And then here's the Apple. Remember on the weekend video, we're saying uh, we expect to see Apple since it bounced off this trend line, making a move up, except Apple to make its way to, uh, you know, to the uh, 134 uh, area. And when it does, then we basically will see Apple help push the NASDAQ 100 and also the S&P 500 into new high territory. And that's exactly what we are seeing today. And also Amazon. Amazon is up 37 point of 1.1 percent. Oh, by the way, Apple was up over 3.2.46%. So Amazon is also pushing up, you know, coming back up to this 3400. And uh, here's the uh, a, uh, potential resistance up here at this zone at 3434. So Amazon is up 34 point of 1.1 percent. And also Netflix. Netflix also uh, had a uh, nice game. It's up 11.2.28 percent. I was looking for this thing to pull back a little bit more down to this 477 area into this zone before I start looking for some long setup to swing it back up to this uh, upper edge here at this 570. But who knows, I might have missed that trade. But anyway, it doesn't matter because there's going to be more trade, uh, you know, along the way. So don't have to go and chase every one of these trade, these trade that come along. If you miss it, you miss it. Now here's Google. Google is up 18 point, almost 19 point, up 0.77 percent, and it closed with a new closing high. And also the new all-time high is only one penny above the uh, closing high, uh, which is uh, 2,448.92. That's the uh, high of the day. 
and today Google closed at 2448.91 so just one penny shy of the uh, uh, all-time high it closed just one penny shy right then also we have uh, Tesla you know Tesla is also uh, didn't really make a big push but it did held its ground and uh, it was uh, up only you know $7.80 at 1.28% so it didn't you know, it didn't provide too much of a push. I guess Apple uh, did most of the work today, but Tesla did hold its ground and held firm. So, so that did not sort of uh, depress the uh, momentum of the other FANG stock in uh, pushing up the uh, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 into new high. And then also we have NVIDIA. NVIDIA also put in a new closing high and also at all time high. It closed up 7.74 points or 1.09 percent another one is microsoft although microsoft did not put in a new all-time high or close at a new closing high but it did uh, you know gain two point or 0.78 percent so that also helped push the uh, uh the s p 500 and the nasdaq 100 up to a uh, new high territory as well so as you can see fang stock is pushing it up all right so um, and now let's take a look at the things that we should be concerned about here is the one minute chart of the uh, S&P 500 and also the uh, uh, new high new low from New York Stock Exchange and the uh, up down volume ratio and the uh, the VIX and the uh, put call ratio and also the advanced, the daily advanced decline. So you can see that the uh, S&P 500 was hovering around down here, right about 12.30 West Coast time, right, which is uh, 3.30 Eastern time. And all of a sudden you see this creeping up a little bit and then here come that big, huge surge into the close, right? Today is Monday OPEX, so you expect some kind of surge or some kind of movement during the last half an hour. Or not back so it's not surprising but what's surprising is the magnitude of the move and it came up and took out the globex all-time high on the e-mini which i will show you after uh, a little bit later okay so you see the uh the new high new low today the uh there's uh, uh 258 more new high than new low but look at the uh up down volume ratio is actually minus 1.47 that means is uh, 1.47 times more down volume than up volume for a market that pushes up to a new high and close with a new closing high. That is, you know, not good, right? And also the VIX, it, it, it did come down. It was kind of elevated up at that 17 level while it was the S&P 500 was hovering around the low of the day. And then uh, during the uh, last half an hour, you see it, it came back down a bit. So it closed today at 16.25. Now, look at the put call ratio. It's still sitting somewhere around under 0.5. Sit at 0.49. Although, early in the morning, it was actually 0.4. So still, this is still pretty optimistic, right? The market participant is still pretty bullish. Uh, and uh, and here is the uh, uh, the daily advance decline. You see there were more decliners than uh, than advancers so there were 433 more declining issue than advancing issue so that's a negative diversion now let's take a look at the daily uh, sentiment chart right, that we usually uh, look at during the uh, weekend video the weekly uh, video okay so you see that the uh, the vix is uh, hovering at 16.39 the quick call ratio 0.49 okay and here we're just kind of recapping the up down volume ratio minus 1.56. Uh, I'm not sure why is there is that little different between the uh, the intraday chart and the daily chart, but uh, still it's negative, right? And uh, 298 uh, more new, I mean more declining issue than uh, advancing issue, and uh, the new high, new low 261 more new 52 week high than new low. But here's the uh, Here's the divergence. You see that the cumulative advanced decline line did not put in a new high, did not take out this uh, pivot high from Friday, right? But the uh, uh, S&P 500 did close with a new closing high. So this is a negative divergence that we have to pay attention to. 
So beware, okay? especially at this stage of the uh, the uh, the game of the right. So and and here is the Nasdaq. You see the Nasdaq spike up, and the uh, up down volume ratio was positive, which is good, 1.43. Okay, that mean 1.43 times more of volume than down volume. So that's the you know got more of volume supporting this upward move, but the advanced decline, the declining issue outnumber the advancing issue by 254 so that again is no good that's a negative diversion and here the uh, new 52 week high outnumber the 52 week low by 198 okay so now here's that divergence that we're looking at All right you can see that uh, let me put this line up here this join to and we could see that here right if we take this pivot high to uh, today's high okay and uh, although if we uh, take a look here that is uh you know so that's nothing wrong with this right here except that just today's negative divergence but also the other thing is if we take a look at that at this standpoint of uh you know a uh, a longer longer term type of a trend then we could see that this thing here is still sloping down but the thing is, you know, we are not too concerned about this, but we are concerned about this right here, right? So when this thing make new high and this thing, uh, you know, the Nasdaq 100 is making new high, right? And the AD, the cumulative AD line is not. And although if it come up and it's not making a new high, it's still okay. But when it comes down, that means putting a negative divergence on a new high, and that is really concerning and we should be cautious. Okay, so pay attention in the coming day on these price action and don't chase all these uh, stocks that have been uh, moving uh, up like, uh, you know, being a little bit of a FOMO. You know, we are looking at some could be a little bit of a turning point here or getting close to a turning point or a little bit more substantial uh, pullback. All right now, the other thing that I want to show you is the E-mini uh, S&P uh, profile. So let me get that chart on and we take a look at that and explain to you what's happening there. So here's the E mini S&P 500 uh, future, the ES. Right? This is today's profile. You see there is this poor low here that it formed today. Okay, And uh, here's that surge that came up over here. And uh, right now we got the single print that we're going to be paying attention to tomorrow to look for those single print. It did come up uh, later on the day or uh, early in the day and uh, took out this poor high here. Okay, so you see that it came up and took out this all-time high. So that's the you know one thing that we want to uh, keep an eye on this poor low and also the uh, single print. Okay, and then uh, we're basically looking for this thing to uh, come down and possibly you know work itself down to this 4191 on these. Uh, you know point of control down here okay so then also the other things that i wanted to uh, uh, highlight uh, show you is this huge surge here right this started at uh, 1215 and here on this bar is 1223 which is you know 323 eastern time okay so it's been trading inside of this value area from uh, friday right so it's been chopping around right so and uh, so you see there's that little Bit of a double bottom uh, pattern and broke out of it and got back above the uh, today's uh, rewrap and once it uh, retook the uh, overnight uh, you know this overnight low and that's basically just a big surge coming up toward the uh, all time I mean the uh, the overnight high which is the globex high right globex all time high and you can see that it uh, took that out and in the uh, after the bell. Uh, then it uh, pulled back a little bit. Okay, so we have to keep an eye on of this uh, surge here. Uh, the uh, point of control is still down here, somewhere around this uh, 28. I mean, I mean 42, 28, 42, 29 area. Okay, so we'll have to keep an eye on to see will this price pull back tomorrow or even during the overnight session. Okay, um, and then see what it will do tomorrow in terms of this price point here, this uh, this all-time high. Now, will the uh, Globex hour take out this all-time high and put in another Globex high? 
we, we just have to wait and see. So that's basically what I want to show you that uh, today's high might seem impressive, but when we look underneath the hood, you know, we'll see, we, we, we see there are some strange thing going on and there are certainly concerns to, uh, for us to uh, keep an eye out, especially on the advanced decline. Uh, also, the other thing is, let me show you the intraday chart. So here's the intraday chart of the up-down volume. Uh, you know, basically it's just, uh, here's the up-down volume ratio for the New York Stock Exchange. I have a highlight here on the NASDAQ and the uh, Russell uh, 2000. And this is basically just the running, uh, uh, you know, intraday, uh, you know, up volume minus uh, uh, down volume. So you can see that it's been negative throughout the session here. And also the advanced uh, decline, you can see it opened up uh, close to uh, 750 uh, more advancing issue than declining issue and didn't take long, right? Uh, within the uh, first half an hour, it went negative. In other words, there were more uh, decliners than advancer, you know, after half an hour trading. So it's a, a little bit of a, a uh, reversal, right? Because it started off with more of the uh, advancer. Then you can see that it came all the way down to minus more than uh, minus 750. In other words, uh, more than uh, 750 more declining issue and uh, an advancing issue. Remember, we start off with the advancing issue leading the uh, declining issue by 750. So it uh, came all the way down and reversed that picture. Then, you know, you see that little surge around, uh, you know, 2.30 uh, Eastern time and it's starting to come back up. So still, it finished the day at minus 433. So 433 more declining issue than advancing issue. Now, this is a take, you know, the cumulative take, you know, just kind of hover around positive and then turn negative once it uh, get into the lunch hour and remain negative. And look at this, right? It even finished the day at negative, the cumulative take, although there was some buy program came up, you know, but we never saw anything close to 800. The highest it uh, came up was uh, the last uh, 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 three minutes, uh, which was uh, 699, right? almost 700 uh, positive take. So we never got to an 800 take. We usually like to see when the market rally to a new high, we like to see, uh, you know, 1,000 plus 1,000 or greater. You know, a lot of those uh, plus 1,000 take were at least 800. So you get a lot of these massive buy programs come in, pushing the market up. So you see, this is the S&P 500 three minute intraday chart. Right? You can see that it just came up and been hovered below the uh, IB low and it came up and, uh, you know, just took out the IB high, <laughs> right? In the last, uh, what, 15 minutes or so, right? Last 10 minutes, you know, just took out the IB high. It's, it's incredible, right? It, uh, it came uh, from uh, 4237 or so. So extensively, we got almost a 20 point uh, move in 40 minutes. So now, and here's the uh, NASDAQ again. Now, the NASDAQ is uh, faring a little bit better on the up-down volume. Right? You see that the, uh, uh, the up-down volume net uh, positive throughout the day. Okay? So that's why we saw a uh, positive you know, uh, up-down volume ratio on the uh, NASDAQ. Now, the Russell did finish uh, negative. I believe it was uh, minus 9 point, right? So, and the Russell uh, 2000, almost neutral, 1.03 to 1 on the up-down volume ratio. So it's almost neutral on the uh, up-down volume. So, uh, but you see on the advanced decline, similarly to the S&P 500, right, for the NASDAQ market, it opened up over 1,200 more advancing issue than declining issue. And again, you know, within, well, this one, it took a little bit longer. It took an hour before it turned negative, before the declining issue overtake the advancing issue, and then it remained negative throughout the session even into the close, and at the close, it was uh, 243 more uh, declining issue and advancing issue. And again, look at the, uh, the cumulative tick. It's been negative all day, right, throughout the entire session. And look at that, mostly negative ticks down here, mostly sell program, minus 500, right? Here, minus uh, 800 on this line here. Anytime you take below, here's, we even see 1,000, minus 1,000 tick here, minus 1,000 tick. Okay, so, uh, so a lot of sell program on the, in the NASDAQ, but look what we got. We got a new high from the NASDAQ 100. So, you know, that is not good. I mean, that, so that's why you have to look 
inside underneath the hood. You see these kind of stuff. Don't just look at trend line, moving average and those kind of stuff. You know, those are manufactured. These are market generated information. Right? And there's nothing there that is being, you know, derived or, or calculated. You know, it is what it is, right? So you can see that, um, you know, the NASDAQ also, you know, just made this huge surge into the close, right? So that's basically, I just want to alert you to the fact that, yeah, the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 did close with a new closing high, but there are things that we should be cautious about and to be careful in the coming days. So thank you for watching and be sure to smash that thumbs up to help me promote and share this video and stay safe.